Okay, let's talk about solving polynomial inequalities. So as you can see on the left-hand side here, we have a polynomial function, and we wanna know when is this gonna be greater than zero. So this greater than, I'm initially just gonna kind of ignore this. If this was an equal sign, I wanna know, first of all, what values of X when we plug them in, because it's in factored form on the left-hand side, when I replace these X's with what number would it make this factor equal zero? Same thing for each of these additional X's as we kind of move through it. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, well, it's gonna be like when X equals negative three, when X equals negative one, and when X equals positive four. I think if I plug in four minus four is gonna make zero, therefore the entire left-hand side equals zero. All right, um, next what I'm gonna do is place these values on the number line. So put them in number line order. So we have negative three, negative one, and positive four. Now it's not to scale, but they are in the correct order on the number line, and that's important. Okay, from here, what we wanna do is test one value in between each section of this number line. So we split up the number line from negative infinity all the way to negative three, between negative three and negative one, et cetera. So we have four different sections on this number line. So quickly, we're gonna move through and we're gonna pick one value in each section. So anything to the left of negative three, such as like negative four. And think about if we plug it in up into our polynomial function, all we're gonna care about is does it turn out positive or negative for each factor? So as we plug it in, we have negative four plus three makes negative one. All I'm gonna do is say that's gonna be a negative though. Negative four plus three makes negative one. Overall, that part is negative and that's what's important. For the next factor, we have negative four plus one is negative three, but it's really just negative. So I'm keeping track of the negatives. That part's still squared. And then negative four minus four more makes negative eight. But really remember, we only care about negatives. Okay, from here, let's count up how many negatives are being multiplied together over on the left-hand side there. You can see that we have one, two, because it's squared, that's gonna be three, and then a fourth one. So four negatives all multiply together to overall make it positive. So we're gonna put a big positive up above our number line in that section. Next, we're gonna repeat it between negative three and negative one. Let's go with negative two. And one at a time, we'll go negative two, gets plugged in for each of the X's. So negative two plus three makes positive one. For that middle factor, we say negative two plus one makes negative one. Then we're gonna square it. So that counts as two negatives. And then negative two minus four makes negative six, overall negative. So as you count these up, we had a positive and then three copies of negatives multiplied together. So the positive doesn't really affect positive or negative, but we have three negatives. An odd number is gonna make negative overall in that section of the number line. Next, anything between negative one and positive four, we just repeat the process. I like plugging in zero. Um, because that makes life fairly easy as far as doing computations. So in for each of the X's, we have zero plus three makes positive. Zero plus one makes positive. It gets squared. And then zero minus four is a negative. So in this case, we have three positives and one negative. Overall is gonna be negative. One more on this number line, we have anything to the to the right of four, so five, six, seven, eight, any of these values, I'm gonna pick 10, because any of these values will return the same result. So plugging in a 10 for each of our X's, we have 10 plus three makes positive 13. 10 plus one makes positive 11, and then we square it. And then 10 minus four makes positive six. So a bunch of positive values be, being multiplied together is overall gonna give us a positive in that section of the number line. There was nothing special about me picking 10 except for it's in that section of the number line to the right of four. So each one of these values um, that we put below the number line, the negative three, negative one, and four, those are when our actual function is gonna equal zero. It's gonna be on the x-axis. We're gonna have a point on our x-axis for that polynomial function that's been factored on the left-hand side. But then the overall graph is gonna be above the x-axis where we put pluses, positives, and then below the x-axis where we put negatives. So now's the first time I've kind of referenced this inequality sign uh, being that it has to be greater than zero. So values that are gonna be greater than zero, that means that it's gonna be positive. Greater than zero means positive. So for ours, what we're looking at is we're looking at the sections of the number line where it's positive over on the left-hand side. 
and positive way over on the right hand side. And then thinking about uh, uh, what kind of solution set or interval notation is going to go along with this, we'd say this one on the left hand side goes from negative infinity all the way to negative three. Now, negative infinity is never going to be included. And negative three is also not going to be included in this situation because this was a strict inequality of strictly greater than zero. It's not going to equal zero. We had another section of our number line that I shaded in where it was going to be positive. Over on the right-hand side, that goes from four off to the right-hand side forever. So four to infinity. Infinity is always going to get the open bracket. And four is also going to get the open bracket in this case as well. Again, because that's a strict inequality, if that had been an or equal to, then we would include the endpoint. Now, my solution set um, is correct in interval notation here. We may throw a union symbol in between for where we're looking for our positive values. As far as the graph goes, these endpoints at negative three and positive four, if I were graphing this, I would include an open circle at each one of those values to indicate that that uh, endpoint is not included. All right, now the alternate question we could be asked on this is there was nothing special as we got going on this problem that said we were only looking for greater than zero. If this had switched and this was a less than zero, you would be using these intersections where we put negatives, where the graph of the polynomial on the left-hand side is below the x-axis. All right, hope this helps out as you're working on uh, solving polynomial inequalities. Good luck.